You know what, nowadays, I think QR code is not longer a new thing for you as we need to scan it with the MyJajatara QR code to check in during this pandemic period. But do you know what a QR code is? What are the differences between the QR code and a barcode? Who invented it? Let me tell you. First, QR code stands for Quick Response Code and it is 10 times faster than a barcode to read the information. In our daily lives, we can easily see the QR code appearing in a wide variety of places such as restaurants, feedback forms, and of course apps. The QR code first started from barcodes. In 1960s, the Japanese used barcode to keep track of their stocks, especially in supermarkets. Over time, they thought this was not enough, so they came up with a post system as known as point of sales, another barcode version. They were still not satisfied with it because that barcode could only store up to 20 alphanumeric characters of information and function with one dimension which is the one direction of coding. Then in 1994, the supermarket owners realized the limitation of these QR codes contacted Denso Bay. From there, a team of developers led by Masahiro Hara came out with the idea to make the coding square because it is easier to spot and scan. Besides that, it allows both horizontal and vertical code information. It also contains more information through the development of a 2D code and hence, it is faster than a barcode. Once QR code was developed, it was used in Japan Kanban, a type of electronic communication tool in the automotive industry following the product food and more. Fast forward to the year 2000, the QR codes were added to ISO international standards and used across the globe. Day by day, the QR code's popularity increased due to it having a much higher capability of transferring information than barcodes. Want to know what's inside the structure of QR code? It consists of information, separators, timing pattern, format information, data and error correction, quiet zone, alignment pattern, and position detection pattern. Normally, people will scan it on a normal side view, but you can also scan it upside down. Can we scan a wooden QR code as well? Of course we can. Even if it loses the corner, a missing chunk in the middle, a random colored noise, just remember that as long as we don't lose more than 30% of the code, it is still recoverable. But it is important that within the 30%, you can't lose a part of the positioning block because the app needs to determine if this is a code. A rip code disorder and a gap also can't be read. Oh yeah, there's one more example that the people usually make the mistakes, which is that the code can't be read if you scan it too near to the code or moving too quickly without scanning the entire code. Thanks to the Japanese, this has made our life convenient and easier. But you know what would be cool? If future smartwatches display could scan QR codes, that would be even faster. I also think there's a chance that some codes might drive you to an unknown suspicious web page. Just be careful and don't simply scan la. That's it for today. Be sure to stay tuned for more You Know What with us. Don't forget to leave your comments below, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Goodbye, I'm Deborah. Don't miss me. Bye.